I also like realized like a few days later that I actually got 90 over 90 for all of them. So you're a very smart boy. Yeah. I know that 90% of 360 is 324. You're better at math than I am. I'm going to have to check that out. <laughs> at what age did you find out he was autistic? Two at the, at the age of or three. It was going on to three. It wasn't going quite on to three. three. Yeah. The major problem that, that we had was that he wasn't communicating. Um, he reads, reads well. He can count. He could count. He could say his ABC. He could recite um, just about anything that um, he sees, but yet he wasn't communicating. Um, I remember when we took him to church, he knows everybody's license plate. Really? Everybody's license mm -hmm. plate, he can't tell you. But he will not communicate. When presents talk to him, nothing. And he kept stacking like the tin stuff right. on top of each other. I remember one day my husband called and said, Kerry, <laughs> sit down. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then he said that, um, I know what happened to Xavier. He has autism. I was researching it and, and kids with autism, they normally stack things on each other. And I said, wow. And that's when we found out. So Daddy, you were the one who found out. Yes, I was a little bit. Because we kept researching. Yeah, I was a little bit concerned because when I actually compared him with children his age, and I saw the level of communication that they were at, I was a little bit concerned. Because when we speak to him, what you only thing he would do is really just repeat what he said, but he wasn't communicating. He was talking, he was really echoing. So he said something and he echoed it. And, I, and so I decided just to do a little research. And everything that I came across that speaks to autism, the lack of eye contact, the compulsion to, like, for instance, Kerry told you that he would go to church and he would just look at all the license plates, the compulsion, the stacking of things, wanting to see things done in a certain order, everything that uh, speaks to autism. And so that was when I said, but this seems to me like he is autistic. So we decided to take him to the doctor to have it checked out. My name is Xavier Harrison. Some people pronounce my name as Xavier Harrison because of the spelling. Spelling and, and yeah. My name also sounds like Xavier Harrison with a Z, but it's X A V I E R R instead of Z A V I E R. So well, thank you for telling me all of that. I appreciate it. <laughs> Xavier. What do you want to be when you grow up? Want to be a house builder or a house designer or maybe even a car manufacturer. Nice. How old are you? I'm 12 years old. You recently did the PEP exams, right? What, what school yep. did you pass to go to? I, I passed to go to Herbert Morrison. Was that your first choice? Yes. What do you like to do, though? I heard that you like to, you're interested in playing football. Well, I'm interested in, interested in knowing football. football. I, one thing I like to do, I usually like to watch YouTube. Right. And, and, um, and when I get bored, I play some games on my phone. Yeah. Also, you play tennis and swimming. I yeah, I don't really have time to do that now, but I might have. I probably have time to do it since it's summer. What happened? Um, before I think when it was seven months, I seven seven eight months. Um, I taught him to count from one to five, and he could count even though. You know, the words wasn't so clear. 
um, he started counting. Um, when he went on to 10 months, 1 to 10, um, 11 months, added five more, he could say it's ABC. Whenever he goes out, he would um, call the words. I remember I took him to Pizza Hut and he said, tomatoes, onions. Yeah, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't speak to you. Right. But he sees it because I had some, some block, some words listed. So he normally repeats the words for me because I gave him my baby can read and leapfrog. So he knows all of those stuff. He could read. He could even read better than than than, than me at at really? that time. He was one. The bigger the word, the easier it is for him to pronounce. How difficult is it for you as his parents coping with a child being autistic? Well, um, it it has been it has been difficult. Has well, been. I will tell you that it has gotten better over the years. But at the beginning, first of all, in terms of accepting the fact that you have a child that is autistic, that was, you know, a bitter pill to swallow. Coupled with that, coupled with that, he was very, very hyperactive, right? When you take him anywhere, you have to be constantly watching him because he was always on the move. And just the challenge of knowing that in spite of the fact that he was brilliant in terms of ac achieving academically, but his motor skills um, really wasn't at the level and his communication skill was not at the level where we wanted. And also coupled with the fact that in Jamaica, the healthcare system, the health card does not cover such things. So in terms of getting him the help, in terms of speech therapy, um, occupational therapy. Uh, it was very difficult because all of that, when we attempted, we had us to put that out of our, our pockets. Um, so it was difficult for you. Yeah, it was difficult. And I did some research. I went overseas and I um, learned a thing or two and I came back and I tried to teach myself. I resigned my job um, when he was three Three years old, yeah, mm -hmm. because I really, I really wanted to put him on the right path. Um, mm -hmm. I worked with him, took him to school. I, I, I did. I taught him. Mm -hmm. I taught him just about anything. I just asked them at the school just to keep him for the day, right. just to keep him occupied. And I said, "Don't worry about the academics. The academics will come." And I taught him. I got the syllabus. I taught him like every single day. Um, at school, I said that whatever challenges, whatever you have, just tell me and I will teach him. And he will he will um he will do it the following day. I remember um his mu I wanted him to do music. And the piano teacher said how am I going to teach an autistic child to do music, to play the piano? And I said, what do you want him to play? And he, and he gave me a few songs. Next day was played. The teacher said, what did you do? What did you do? I said, I just teach him how to play the piano. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's stuff like that. Maths, English, whatever the subject is, just tell me the subject. Just tell me the, the, the work that you're giving him. And I will do it. I will research it and I will teach him. And then the following day, I said, I just want you to keep him at school, to keep, to keep him occupied. As his parents, though, how, how did you feel when you found out about his pep results? Oh, my God. Uh, well, to be honest, where Max is concerned, we're not surprised. Because he Matt, actually came home again? and told me he got Matt's, 100. Matt's for him is, is, is natural. It, it comes naturally, right? Um, but he did, in fact, tell me that he was going to get some pretty good grades, um, and he did. So he, he promised a good grades, and, and, and he, he delivered. delivered. He delivered. He delivered. So well, he, when he was younger, mm -hmm. he would 
use the calculator when the other kids play with dolls and so forth. Xavier uses the calculator. You're an autistic boy, right? Yep. What is it like being around children in a in the primary school environment? Oh. Well, I made. Well, honest, honestly, I think. Well, uh, what I know is that a lot of girls like to protect me from running away. <laughs> like, for example, Shantavia, <laughs> Brianna. I even talk to her sometimes. Like on the corner, I even talk to her about and. And we learn a lot from each other, each other. And the thing is, I'm good at I'm good at maths and social studies. That these are my two best subjects. But Brianna is good at science and language arts. So, so yeah. So you, Brianna, you said Brianna protected you. The girls will protect you at school. I mean, yeah, yeah. I also had a friend. I also had a friend called Jamie, but I usually argue with him a lot. Why is that? Why did you argue? <laughs> yeah, many different, many different agreement disagreements. <laughs> and how do you feel now that you're moving on to high school, Herbert Morrison? So I heard from someone who already went to Cal. Well, I don't. I don't. Hope. I already heard from someone who already went to high school, Kyle Hiat. He said that I should enjoy the rest of my rest f summer from now on because he said high school was miserable. <laughs> so, high school is miserable. What do you think? Do you think high school will be miserable? I don't really know. How do you feel being selected as a top overall student last weekend? For the um the award ceremony, the mm -hmm. East Central um scholarship awards, what was it like for you? Well, I was very happy, happy, but I also knew that because I was the only boy out of four girls, four people who I was the only boy out of four people who got a ninety and above. Like they just revealed it. They revealed it before. So I knew I was the top boy. So and how did that make you feel being the only you're the top boy? It was good. Good. Well, I think one of the greatest challenges as it relates to Xavier um, was doing COVID and adapting to and adjusting to the online. Yes, we got it loaded up. We had to start to the, the online right. situation. That was at the beginning a challenge for him because he wouldn't settle down. I think after a while, however, he got the, the hang of it, and so things got better from there. But in the onset, it was really challenging and difficult. Okay. So, Xavier, is there anything you'd like to say to anybody who is autistic like you and are having challenges? Ow. Oh. Never give up. You can you can do it. You could probably you can make it to high school. And do not make anyone bully you for your autism. Show your strengths. Show your strengths to them. Them and maybe one day you'll be good as me.